Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, July 7th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, good news from Microsoft. Microsoft it came out with a patch for the Print Nightmare vulnerability CVE 2021-34527. Currently, most of the current versions of Windows do have a patch available. There are at this point only uh, three exceptions. Windows 10 version 1607, Windows Server 2016, and Windows Server 2012. Everything else has a patch available and Microsoft states that these three remaining operating systems will re receive a patch shortly so by the time you listen to this a patch may already be available for all versions of Windows. This patch also fixes the older vulnerability CVE 2021-1675 and Microsoft recommends that you apply the patch as quickly as possible and I think uh, this makes a lot of sense. It does not depend on you applying the June patch for 2021-1675. That patch again is included here so you can go straight ahead and apply uh, this patch that Microsoft just released and get your printers working again. There's no widespread reports of exploitation for this vulnerability yet and uh, that's in part of course due to it requiring valid user credentials to get started. So this will remain to be one of those lateral movement privilege escalation style vulnerabilities that you'll see more as a follow-up to the initial uh, compromise. And talking about uh, patches, Kaseya also stated that they will release a patch to their customers shortly. Their uh, software as a service offering should be back up and running at this point in time. And their uh, on-premise systems will be provided with a patch shortly thereafter. So uh, likely uh, it could be Wednesday morning if it hasn't already uh, been uh, pushed out yet. There was initially sort of a little uh, delay here in their timeline but they first wanted to get their software as a service offering back up and running and then a few hours later they were going to release a patch for the on-premise version of their software still treated with caution since it is a target now it is a known issue and the success certainly has been demonstrated here with as Kaseya put it up to 1500 organizations being affected by this particular ransomware incident so there certainly is a potential for follow-up here in particular since there may be additional vulnerabilities in this product of course with this patch they should have patched all the vulnerabilities that were reported by entities like Huntress Lab in the past. And certainly keep Kaseya VSA disabled until the patch is applied and before you start anything up, please run uh, the different uh, detection tools that people have come up with. And yes, I said that before, make sure that you are only using detection tools that you receive from trusted sources. There will certainly be some follow-up activity here and some copycats that will for example claim that they are the R evil group or do other things uh, to either convince victims uh, to pay the money or to convince victims or others to run tools or run software that will then infect them. And if you're using Kaspersky's password manager, uh, you must update and you probably do want to also update some of the passwords you generated using Kaspersky Password Manager, which of course is particularly tricky if you used in the past then have since switched to a different password manager. Now, first of all, I am a huge fan of password managers. I think you have to use one, but sadly Kaspersky's implementation wasn't all that ideal to say it mildly. The problem they had was that the random number generator that they used uh, to create these random passwords, well, it 
actually was seeded with the current time. So for a given second, the password generator did generate a very specific password. And an adversary that was able to figure out approximately at what time you did create a certain password would be able to recreate or brute force the password. This of course in particular problem if for example hashed passwords were leaked it wouldn't really be possible for an attacker to brute force your password if it was a long random password which is something that these password managers like Kaspersky are trying to create but in this case well uh, for each year you only have about a uh, 30 million seconds, which of course is something that's uh, not all that difficult to calculate hashes for. And uh, as a result, it wouldn't be all that difficult to brute force passwords created with Kaspersky's password manager offline. The vulnerability was found uh, by the Ledger security team. Ledger creates uh, these crypto coin wallets, so certainly a company that's familiar with cryptography and uh, random numbers. And the blog post that they published about these vulnerabilities makes a real good uh, sort of read if you are dealing with creating random numbers and you want to sort of look at some of the common pitfalls if you are, for example, trying to create random passwords. The real problem here is also that the vulnerability was originally reported in June of 2019 and it took until now for Kaspersky, actually April uh, 2021 and then May 2021 was uh, the actual uh, CVE assigned that uh, for Kaspersky to really come forward with the vulnerability and actually mark in its product these old passwords as vulnerable. Well, and if at the recent Amazon Prime Day you obtained an Amazon Echo Dot and you no longer like it, don't necessarily sell it on eBay right away. If you reset the device and don't disconnect it from your Amazon Cloud account, then the new owner may just restore the device from your Amazon Cloud account. But even if you disconnect the device from your Cloud account and you do a factory reset on the device, not all the information may actually be deleted. And that's due to the fact that uh, Amazon uses an unencrypted file system and due to very leveling on the SSD memory they're using, the data is not necessarily deleted. Now, it takes some effort to get the data off the device, uh, but uh, certainly has been demonstrated in a paper that was just uh, published by Dennis Gies and Guerrera Nubir from Northeastern University. A better approach, of course, from Amazon would be uh, to use an encrypted file system and then uh, erase the encryption keys in addition to overriding the file system. That way, if remnants of the file system are still available, they would be encrypted and not accessible uh, to an attacker. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks for listening. Sorry for spending so much time on Brent Nightmare and Kaseya again. But well, uh, those are still the big topics uh, today. So thanks and uh, talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.